Since the coming of the first people, Lake Champlain has been utilized for travel. Much of this activity has been north and south following the lake's sculptured shape left behind by the glaciers. This north-south orientation evolved into a natural highway for travel between Canada and the United States. Largely forgotten in the historical chronology of military campaigns, glorious steamboats, and wooden commercial fleets has been the Cross Lake East-West ferries which move settlers and travelers from the shores of Vermont and New York. Appearing in ever-increasing numbers after the American Revolution, the first Cross Lake ferries were canoes, rafts, and rowboats, which gradually evolved into small sloops, sail ferries, steam ferries, and even horse-powered ferries. By the dawn of the 20th century, automobiles and trucks were changing the travel and commercial habits of the nation, and locally there was great agitation for a bridge to span the waters of the lake. The leading proponents argued a bridge would trigger a new prosperity. In a remarkably short span of time, Vermont and New York agreed to be partners for a new Champlain Bridge, the first bridge to span the lake since 1777. In the summer of 1929, the Champlain Bridge was completed and ready to be opened. The event has been preserved in a film recorded by Alan Penfield Beach, historian and owner of Vermont's Basin Harbor Club. The opening of the bridge was a truly momentous historic event, and the communities on both sides of the lake turned out to see it. There were the inevitable speeches by assorted dignitaries, but central to the event were the presence of Governor John Weeks of Vermont and New York's Governor Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who in just four years would become the 32nd President of the United States and guide the country through the trials of World War II. cavalcade of boats assembled at the bridge to witness the ceremony from the water. Perhaps none more impressive than the steamer Vermont Three, whose tall stacks had dictated the high central arch design of the bridge. After the cutting of the ribbon, a line of wonderfully designed floats from communities around the lake began their parade over the bridge. Virgins, Ticonderoga, Middlebury, and Bristol all contributed floats. The winged entry from Bristol had gotten wedged at the start of the event and briefly held up the festivities. All had gathered to celebrate what was clearly viewed by the collective community on both sides of the lake as the changing of an era. Almost overnight, several sail ferries which operated north and south of the bridge went out of business. The steam ferry, G.R. Sherman, which had operated from Port Henry to Chimney Point for three decades, shut down its fires and ended its career. The opening of the Champlain Bridge was followed in 1936 with the completion of a northern bridge at Rouse's Point. Together, these new and reliable means across the lake spelled convenience and prosperity for some and the end of an era for others. Today the bridge is a tangible symbol of a profound change in the evolution of transportation technology. Her high central arch was built to accommodate the stacks of steamboats which have long since disappeared from the lake. 
The legacy of Cross Lake Ferries, however, lives on. The Lake Champlain Transportation Company and the Shoreham Ticonderoga Ferries still cross the lake at four traditional corridors and provide a connection to a way of travel which has been operating on the lake continuously for more than two centuries.